Mississippi. Home to blues music, sprawling cotton fields, incredible kudzu gross, and the primary reason why I'm here, a roughly 300 mile stretch of the Transamerica Trail. Mississippi has a unique beauty that blends the generally flat, open spaces of the southeast with some of its more mountainous neighbors, Arkansas and Tennessee, with over 60% of its landmass covered by forests. I didn't know what to expect when I started the trail, but it certainly wasn't what I got. Join me as I drive across the Mississippi backcountry for two days along the Transamerica Trail. By this point, I had only been on the trail for about two hours, but it was already starting to get dark. Due to a late start, and reaching my start point in extreme western Mississippi several hours later than planned, I lost a lot of daylight. I was not going to make it to my originally planned campsite. Referencing my guide GPS, I decided to search for a new site in a nearby area labeled as Holly Springs National Forest. After half an hour of searching trails, I couldn't find anything suitable. There was very little level and open ground, and on top of that, I had a sneaking suspicion that this wasn't actually a part of the National Forest. This was confirmed when I decided to search for National Forest campgrounds, and my GPS directed me another hour and a half to the northeast. I'm assuming that this region was either mislabeled or outdated on Gaia. To top it off, I lost all of my accessory lighting when the thermal protection kicked in on the circuit breaker controlling them. In the interest of safety, I decided to admit defeat and head back to the last main road off of the trail. I really was looking forward to spending some time in the trees next to a campfire, but the reality is that sometimes you just have to listen to your gut. This would have to do for the night. With rain in the forecast for 6am, I wanted to fold up the tent before then. I would need every minute of rest that I could get, because the next morning would prove to be an eventful one.
All right, so here we are. Found myself in a nice predicament. Oh my goodness, this stuff is like absolute snot. So, there's a road. It's heavily washed out. That was not indicated on the maps. So, I got out to it, tried to turn around, and uh, basically was kind of sliding in place. So, figured I would stop before I got any closer to this thing. Um, so, the plan. Uh, I'm gonna try and winch out and do like a sideways pull. God, I can't even walk on this stuff. Goodness gracious. All right, so sideways pull, winch from the front. Got my tree saver over here, snatch block, and I'm gonna try to attach it to the uh, right rear on the bumper to see if I can do some type of sideways pull to put myself in a better position. Um, if I can somehow angle the front down there, there's a couple more trees. So I'm gonna do what I can. I might, might be here for a bit. We'll see how it goes. Now this was a downright terrible place to get stuck. With a significant drop into the washout just a few feet away, setting up a perpendicular winch pull in the opposite direction against the only nearby tree seemed to be the best bet. Unfortunately, the angle on the synthetic rope was far from optimal, but making this pull was necessary. When outside of the Jeep, I made sure that either the vehicle was between me and the rope, or that I was outside of effective range just in case of a breakage. The saturated clay that was initially a curse was also somewhat of a blessing here, as a 10,000 pound worn winch had no issue sliding the heavy jeep sideways. Initially, I attempted to line the jeep up and simply back out, but another washout to my rear and the clay had other plans. After working with multiple configurations over the course of two hours, I finally managed to spin the jeep around and point the nose back up the trail to a series of sturdier trees. All right, so with a little creative winching, um, I wouldn't say we're out, but I'm turned around. I'm actually pointed up the trail and there's quite a few good sized trees up there if I do happen to, uh, to get stuck again. But you can see these tires. I mean, this stuff is straight, pretty much clay. I mean, they're completely slicked over. These are the Ridge Grapplers. Typically they have pretty deep tread, but uh, not enough for this trail. I'm gonna head back up the trail, um, try to find a detour around this portion of it because this obviously isn't gonna work. So it might be hard to tell by the video, but that's probably, that's a good five or six foot drop. About seven or eight foot up there. But anyway, let's get out of here. Unfortunately, with the rain earlier, the terrain was no less slick than before on the return trip. Fortunately, however, there was only a single short hill climb to contend with. Though there was yet another washout off of the driver's side, I was confident that I could winch my way up if it came to that, which of course it did. With ample practice earlier, it took just 10 short minutes to make my way up the incline. Nearly three hours after originally getting stuck, finally free of the now infamous County Road 555, I set off for Holly Springs National Forest and the conclusion of the Mississippi portion of the trail.
that marks the end of the Mississippi stretch of the Transamerica Trail. Though relatively short, at around 310 miles and 16 hours of driving, it was a great experience, and I now have a new appreciation for a state that I really didn't know much about. Exploration is always the goal, and Mississippi certainly did not disappoint. Until next time, I'm Marshall. Stay safe, and I'll see you all on the trail.